Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Murray. Uh, yeah, I'm covering my face. Um, I've got this horrible sore in my mouth and uh, frankly it looks like a baboon's butt on my face. So I'm just covering it for your sanity and uh, for your benefit. You know what? I could just blur it out. Yeah, but uh, we're going to take a look at this transport slash teleporting effect. But uh, yeah, I haven't even reviewed the footage yet, so let's jump in. But first, intro. Okay, so we're in After Effects and I've got my footage here, actually, and here's the other scene as well. So uh, we're going to take a look at how this whole thing was done. I'm going to break down this one first. So let me just close all of this and collapse it to make it organized for you. What I have is my background here. This is just the background plate because you always got to catch a clean plate without any like the, the subject like Duncan. He's moving. Uh, I have him out of the shot and I just capture the background with the tap on and the the switch on or the yeah the tap essentially and the water coming through so that's the background there I always make sure i have that so that i can have something to fall back on because when he's out of out of the frame i want that back clean background um at the same time i want to be able to manipulate duncan here without manipulating the background uh, so i actually cut him out doing some roto which i'll show you in a sec but that'll give me the ability to shrink him like that and do this effect. So uh, obviously there's the background. Next we have Duncan, which is this layer. And uh, this is uh, him walking around kind of doing his thing. And I've got the background plate here as well. This is also the background plate. It's just the two same thing. So ignore that one. Um, and then this is Duncan. He's just essentially doing his thing. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what's going on. And uh, as soon as he starts to sneeze and kind of disappear, that's when I have this layer. This layer is just uh, a one frame. So if I just show the properties here, I've right clicked on it. I've done time remapping, enabled the time remapping. And you can see that it's had a time fr freeze here. And so it's just one frame, but you wouldn't know that because it's happening so fast and there's motion blur. I've also reduced the scale. I've keyframed the scale from 100% It went down like two keyframes and took it down to 50%. That way it kind of adds a bit of motion blur to it as well. And then I have the effect of mesh warp. That way I kind of get to mesh it as well. So in the beginning here, I've added a keyframe to the distortion mesh and I've had no interaction here. But the further I go to the last keyframe, the more that this mesh kind of implodes on itself. So it's almost like everything's being sucked into one spot. And that's kind of what I've done. Like you can see he's a little deformed here and then I go more, he's more deformed and kind of pushes the outside of, push, essentially pushes, pushes the outside of him or the outline of him into the center of his body like he's being sucked into something like if you had a tissue being sucked into a vacuum. Now you don't necessarily need mesh warp. You can just do the scale position or the scale property from here 100%, go down three or four keyframes and scale it down to 0%. It'll zoom all the way to 0% over here. And that you can do that and it would kind of disappear like that. I added the mesh kind of, I wanted it to like fold in on itself. I wanted Duncan to fold in on himself whilst the effect is happening. And then up here I have an adjustment layer for the turbulent displacement. I just added the adjustment layer, did the effect turbulent displacement, added a keyframe to the evolution, went down in time uh, and adjusted more of the evolution so it adds some kind of shimmer effect you can see over here and here, kind of like heat kind of thing, which is kind of cool. And uh, so I just did that over time. And then also the opacity, what I did was had the created a 100% opacity here and then just made it fade out the further it went. So that it just kind of fades out. And then the mask obviously kind of around where Duncan was and I feathered it so that the edges aren't so harsh. And then the last thing to kind of top it all up, there's like these spell effects. You can get them from Production Crate or, you know, Video Copilot. There's a bunch of stuff, but I'll put Production Crate and Video Copilot in the description. You can check them out. Pretty much the ones that I got here are free. You can also get premium ones as well, but you can get free stuff as, as well from them. So go ahead and download those. And I just, I mean, <laughs> I, I was pretty lazy. All I did was slap it onto the video and did screen all right just just select screen over here and uh that's all i did with it it's 
pretty lazy, but you know, it works. And then there's this shot. Oh, I almost didn't use the mesh warp effect because I just grabbed the scale property and it worked pretty well. You can see I have the anchor point right at the bottom here where he is. He just kind of scales up into the frame. I kind of did use the mesh a bit, not that much though. Um, so yeah, otherwise everything else is pretty much the same. But yeah, otherwise that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed, consider subscribing. I am going to be making more in the future. There's a bunch of stuff on my store, some free stuff you can use for your editing, visual effects, filmmaking stuff. Uh, just some goodies for you guys. And also there's some premium stuff if you feel like supporting the work I do. Uh, some really good tools to add some functionality and some speed to your workflow. Um, and generally they're just good stuff. So go ahead and check those out. But remember, until next time, keep smiling, keep shooting. It's freezing my nuts off. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me.